Hey everyone in JCTV land, it's Larissa here with Reva and we are interviewing our guest Lila Rose. She is the founder and president of an organization called Live Action and it is promoting the pro-life platform. She's also a UCLA student, go Bruins! And we're so excited to hear about all her undercover sting operations and uh, what she really did in college. No. <laughs> here, so thanks Lila for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Um, and so you're actually about to graduate. I know you didn't yes. get to like expand on that in the hot seat, <laughs> um, but what's your, what's your major and what are your plans after college? My major is history and after college full-time pro-life work because I've dedicated my life to building the culture of life. So all that full-time even though I'm kind of doing it full-time in school. Well, you know, a lot of people have actually heard about you. I know I have, like, through either YouTube or you've been on, like, Fox News, a lot of newspapers, like, a lot of coverage for undercover work. But, you know, before we get into your undercover sting operations, you were 15 when you started live action, right? Yes. How in the world did that happen as a 15-year-old? <laughs> I know. She says I she's just getting out of college, and she says she's dedicated her life. And most yeah, people don't I, start I, their I, life until they get out of college, and you've already <laughs> lived so much. Well, it's a blessing to know, kind of really know what you want to do and just have this calling from God on your heart. But when I was 15, it was just a matter of learning about abortion over the years as a young teen, figuring out what it was that it killed an innocent human being, and then recognizing more and more as I thought about it that this is a human rights abuse. This is the biggest human rights abuse that I believe our country is facing. So when I was 14, 15, I just really felt strongly that I need to do something. And I got on my knees and prayed, and then I just got a few friends over to start up, and that's kind of how it how it all began. Just a few friends over, yeah. and <laughs> 15 years old, yeah. accepting the calling from We're God. Save the world, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's how it started. Now, uh, didn't you mention something like when you were nine years old, you saw a, a very horrifying image yes. that stuck with you? Tell us about that. Yes. Well, I'm one of eight kids, which is awesome, and I was homeschooled, which is crazy, but which also... are you in the family Third too? oldest. Third oldest, In between okay. five, five boys, so grew up oh, pretty tough. okay. But when I was nine, I found this book in my family room, which was called A Handbook on Abortion, and I loved to read, and I was always looking around for books, I guess, so I opened it up, and it fell to the middle. And in the middle were images of a, of a child that had been aborted. Oh. And I remember closing the book and pushing it away because I didn't want to look, and then I brought it back and I looked. And I was looking at a baby 10 week old unborn child with little arms and legs who'd been wow. the victim of abortion. And that stayed with me. And I just thought, how could anybody do this to a baby? Mm. Is this really happening? And it was a book for, for people to do it, or it was just explaining both sides? It was, it was called A Handbook on Abortion. So it was, it was written by some pro life activist, Dr. and Mrs. Wilkie. Oh. Back in the 70s, I mean, a okay. really old book, but it was basically informing people, about informing, what, educating wow. what it yeah. was. Okay. Exactly. So, okay, now you're in high school, you got a bunch, a bunch of friends, and so what is like the first thing that you guys did? I mean, you just have yeah. meetings like every, it's like a club? Now. Yeah, yeah. Well, at first it was just a few friends, and actually we, we'd get together and go, okay, what can we do about abortion to end abortion in our community? We were very ambitious. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the next week, nobody came. I was sitting there with my little pack of flyers, and no one was there. So it started out really small, and, it, and my mom said, leadership is lonely, but you know what, you just got to keep at it and just Aww. keep on trying to make a difference. So it went from that to now we're an organization with thousands of, of, of people involved with us and we have huge outreach programs so it just it started small with community based going to the churches primarily go, talking to youth pastors saying hey can we address the youth congregation and tell them the truth about abortion wow. and tell them about the culture of life and educate them with videos and a cool presentation mm -hmm. and that's kind of it started snowballing off of that so now then you go to UCLA yes. and you <laughs> cause quite a bit of commotion with this undercover sting operation. I just like saying that because <laughs> it just sounds, sounds cool. so cool. Yes. Um, tell us where you came up with the idea and what exactly happened. Yes. Well, abortion clinics, and there are hundreds of abortion clinics across the country. There are 3, 000, over 3,000 abortions every day. Oh my goodness. And in every the practice day. of that horrific violence there's all kinds of other issues and, and problems and women are being women are being made victims too so undercover work has been done in the pro-life movement before but we just wanted to get video coverage of it hidden camera police quality hidden camera footage of where these abortionists are breaking the law they're oh. supposed to give women basic information or they're supposed to report suspected sexual abuse I mean mm -hmm. basic things that they're supposed to do by law and they don't do any of it they just are concerned with selling abortions. So we started to do this undercover work with the hidden cameras now, do to they, get the evidence. Does the government do any of this? Because I know they do stings for like alcohol or yeah. tobacco sales. Do they do stings like this typically? That's a great question. I mean, the government should be investigating these hundreds of abortion clinics which are breaking the laws regularly, mm -hmm. but they don't often because 
the government is giving hundreds of millions of dollars to these abortion clinics, mm. to Planned Parenthood, which is the biggest abortion chain in the U.S. So it's kind of against their own interests. So tell us about, now, your, your, your first thing was, where was that at? Was that at UCLA or was it at Planned Parenthood? I am so <laughs> jealous right now, okay? I'm fighting it. I have always wanted to be like a like a well, spy under, or something. This undercover no, vigilante. Really I'm like, this is so cool. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Well, it, it, it is cool, but it's also just hugely saddening and hard because you're going into the literally where the enemy is what better wow. thing does the enemy want to do than kill and destroy mm. than lead women astray to bring their children to be killed i mean yeah. what better thing so and these are them places do it themselves exactly yeah. these are places of death and evil so mm. but my first investigation was actually at ucla i came there as a freshman and i wanted to go to my health center on campus where they you know help out the kids i remember that center <laughs> you do arthur ash center right long yep. lines and find out what they told pregnant students Students. Did they support oh. women at my school who got pregnant? Because Lord knows they are getting pregnant. Right. So what happens to them? Because we never see pregnant women on campus. And I was told by the nurse there, UCLA doesn't support women who are pregnant. What? That's the, there's two abortionists you can go talk to. We can give you their information. So they just flat out said you can't be pregnant and on campus? Basically. It's, it's going to be embarrassing. It's difficult. Adoption is no fun. So have the abortion. That was my first And there were two clinics that they recommended you go to? Two oh. different abortionists. Wow. So that was my first taste of the kind of manipulative counseling that those who are pro-abortion subject women to. And I wanted to find out what it was happening in the actual abortion clinics after that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well then, and tell us about, the, there's like one particular video that's been on YouTube all over the place. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how that, how that sting kind of undercover operation went. Yeah, um, you, the, if you're talking about the sexual abuse cover-up video maybe. What we've mm -hmm. done is we've released several videos right. in the Mona Lisa Project, which is basically a national undercover investigation of sexual abuse cover-up at Planned Parenthood abortion clinics. Mm -hmm. Basically, little girls going to these clinics, they're pregnant, they don't know what to do. Older men take them in often because they're victims of abuse. Yes. And they go into these clinics and Planned Parenthood is supposed to immediately report even suspected abuse mm -hmm. to the authorities. Instead of doing that, what we capture on tape is they tell myself, I'm posing as like a 13 year old, right? Mm -hmm. I have a Hannah Montana shirt on and saying, <laughs> he's 31. You know, what, what do I do? Yeah. And we have the hidden cam running and the clinician says, just say he's 15, you know, lie to your parents. Mm -hmm. Or they say, you know, have him take you down the street or across the state lines for a secret abortion and he can pay for it, it's 500 bucks. I mean, they try to get this little girl, they cover up the crime, get a secret abortion and they send the little girl back to yeah. sexual abuse. Even though they're supposed to report it to the authorities. Exactly.